Hello, my name is Danielle Tolzman, Policy and Family Leadership Coordinator for Family Voices of Wisconsin. As you prepare for advocacy for change, it's important to understand the impact family involvement has had in making legislative policy, the policy process, and why this is the right time to connect with your legislator. A little about our organization, Family Voices of Wisconsin is our state's affiliate organization and serves as Wisconsin's HRSA-funded Family-to-Family Health Information Center. Our work is focused on distributing easy-to-understand information for families and providers, family leadership involvement and support, and policy development initiatives. We are also part of a statewide network serving children and youth with special health care needs supported by Wisconsin's Title V program. Parents have been advocating for their own families for a long time. It might be at the IEP table or at the medical clinic, maybe working with health professionals on a plan of care, but that advocacy is needed outside your front door too, out in the community. One of those places that needs your voice is as legislative policy is being developed. Here are some examples of how advocacy by self-advocates and families have made great strides in making things better. One example is the 1975 law that said that all children are guaranteed a free, appropriate public education. Before this time, children with disabilities were often not in public schools. Another is the 2010 Affordable Care Act, which says in part, that individuals cannot be not denied health insurance due to a pre-existing condition, including a disability. So why is this the right time for advocacy for change? Well, every two years, the state goes through a budget process and the process starts in the summer and goes into the fall about a year in advance of the planned budget's adoption. State departments each submit their budgets to the Department of Administration, and there the budgets are all compiled and presented to the governor. Then, usually in February, the governor announces their budget priorities and submits the proposed budget bill to the legislature for their consideration. It's important to remember that at this point, the executive budget, the governor's budget, it's a proposal, it's a starting point. Not long after that proposed budget is announced, the legislature refers it to the Joint Finance Committee. This is a group of both senators and representatives of both political parties who go through the budget with a fine tooth comb and look at each request very carefully and critically. Some parts might come out, something new might go in, or something in the proposed budget can also be changed. A lot of the times at the same time that joint finance is looking at this, so are each of the committees. The legislature is split up into multiple committees, the health committee, a transportation committee, and so on. This is a great time for legislators, joint finance, and the committee members to hear from families before concrete decisions are made. There are multiple opportunities in this February to June time window to tell your elected officials about the state funded programs and services that are not only not working well for your family, but also to talk about the services that are working so they can know to protect them through this budget process. Participation in organized events like Advocacy for Change is a great way to do that. Not long after, the Joint Finance Committee will also be holding open public hearings to gather even more input and feedback. Here is just one of the reasons why it's so important for families to be in the hallways of the Capitol to be heard. The only way your legislator will know what's important to you and to your family is if you tell them. People who are paid to do this work are called lobbyists. Tens of millions of dollars are spent by them but the voice your legislator really wants to hear from is yours. Here is a list of one year's top lobbying groups. 
these groups probably aren't talking about the things that are important to us, which is why your legislators really need to be informed and educated. And who better to do that than the families that lives these programs that they're funding every day? Legislators are generalists. They consider literally thousands of pieces of legislation every year. They need to know how something does or does not support your family. It's our job as parents, as advocates, to educate and to inform. Elected officials do want to hear from you. They have this job because they want to do it and do it well. They want to be reelected. They want to help. But remember, they can't help if they don't know, and that's why these visits are so important. If you start to feel like maybe they're too busy or they don't want to hear from you, please remember that these officials have many people, like the groups on the last slide, those lobbyists, who are coming to see them to give their two cents too. And so this is where we can do our part to give as powerful of a message as we can as concisely as we can by being prepared. And you're doing that now with these preparation activities. Remember that the legislator you're speaking with might not understand your issues, and it's up to us as parents and advocates to help them understand. Telling stories is an important way to help legislators understand your experiences. Stories are what people remember and they deepen their understanding of the issue and it really makes it real and human. With this understanding, our legislators can make informed decisions and having an understanding of how their action or inaction can affect us. And you never know, you might connect in a way you didn't expect to. Finding a commonality or a touch tone in your story reminds them of something in their own. Thanks for being here. I hope this has been helpful as you get ready for advocacy for change. We look forward to seeing you soon.